If you move to North Carolina and you look at the, some, some work that's been done in North Carolina with young cows, where all the cows were sired by Colt Hereford bulls, they had Angus Hereford, they had Brangus Hereford, and they had Gelby Hereford in this particular study. Birth weights were very similar among all of these breed crosses of cows among, for all their calves. Brangus Hereford and Gelby Hereford had much more similar weaning weight, 205 day weaning weight, than the Angus Hereford did, so they outperformed the, the more standard Angus Hereford. Um, Brangus Hereford had intermediate pregnancy rate compared to the Angus Hereford and the Gelby Herefords. We look at weaning weight for cow exposed, Angus Hereford and Brangus Hereford were very similar. Weaning weight per cow weight, the Brangus Hereford had an advantage and they carried that advantage through. This is the only, only study I've ever seen that expressed it this way, but weaning weight per cow weight exposed, so they're, they're kind of doing a in efficiency and reproduction together, Brangus came out on top, or the Brangus Herford cross female came out on top in the North Carolina environment. As you look at those cows as mature cows as opposed to the young cows, this is the same study. Again, very similar birth weights, uh, identical trend, fairly pretty much for the uh, uh, weaning weight, very similar trends as well for weaning weight per cow exposed. Um, and one of the things about this, again, very similar trends down here on between the Angus Hereford and Brangus Hereford. One of the things that was interesting to me is the Brangus Hereford cows actually produced as much milk as the Gelby Hereford cows did. So there may be some greater milking potential there than many of us realize. So I don't believe we can afford to pass on what the Brahmin cross or the Brangus cross or any, I should say, Boston Indicus cross cow has to offer in terms of hybrid vigor, and performance in the southeast. The next question I get is, yeah, we love those cows, but they're big and they're high milking and they eat a lot. We really have to pay attention uh, from that standpoint. Well, there was some really interesting work that, that's been done at, at Nebraska at the Meat Animal Research Center. Um, this is some work Ronnie Green did where he looked at Angus Hereford cows compared to Brahmin cross cows. And you see that, yeah, they do get more milk. They get more milk at two years of age, three years of age, four years of age. They get more milk. So they are higher milking cows. No question about that. But one of the really interesting things is when they took this a little further, some of the work that Farrell and Jenkins have done there, where they looked at the pre-weaning efficiency of those Boss Indicus versus Boss Taurus crossbred cows. And they, they looked at, at, specifically in this comparison that I, I pulled out, they, they were comparing Angus Hereford versus Brahmin Cross. The milk yield of these was similar but numerically higher for the Brahmin. Calf birth weight was suppressed by better than 10 pounds in this particular study. Calf weaning weight was increased by nearly 100 pounds. Calf average daily gain was higher. And then a measure of what they term cow efficiency here, which is basically ounces of calf weaning weight per pound of dry matter intake of the cow. The Brahmin cross cow was more efficient. In Nebraska, she was more efficient. They actually did this study further, and when they did these particular studies, it was interesting because they put the cow, they shut her up in a pan, they fed her everything she's going to eat, they supplemented the calf, and they had a pretty good measure of um, efficiency of what she was eating. One of the things they did was say, well, okay, that's true, but if we look at this cow from a uh, efficiency standpoint, what if we didn't give them all they wanted to eat? What if, what, if we, what if we put them on a maintenance diet? What if we stressed them out a little bit? Not the traditional um, plan of nutrition that we might see in Nebraska. So we stress them a little bit. One of the things that, that showed up was that in terms of milk yield, the Brahmin cross cows had about 8% higher peak milk yield. They had 18% more total milk yield, suggesting maybe more persistence in terms of their lactation. Their calves were 8% lighter at birth, but 19% um, or gained 19% heavier. Yes, the Brahmin cross cow ate more, 15% more. But when you put the efficiency statement down here into the equation where you look at pounds of calf wean per mega cow or of energy consumed, they were very similar with it, even a slight advantage to the Brahmin cross cow on a maintenance energy diet. They took that study one step further and they said, what if we give them 
higher than maintenance. What if we give them all they want to eat? What happens? Again, what you saw was an advantage in terms of peak milk yield and total milk yield for both groups of these cows. Maybe that advantage wasn't quite as large. We still saw suppression in birth weight. That Brahman cross cow was able to suppress birth weight. We saw 25% improvement in adjusted weaning weight on these calves. And the thing that's really interesting here is when you give her all she wants to eat, the Brahman cross cow eats less. She consumes less energy in, that, in, the, in this environment where we're higher than maintenance. And so she eats less energy. And when you put this on a cow efficiency standpoint, she was 45% more efficient than the Angus Herford in Nebraska. Now realize, we're still talking about Nebraska. We haven't got to south of Lake Okeechobee where I'm dealing with producers where it's extremely hot or so many other environments that we'll talk about in just a minute. So I think there's some efficiency there. It's not often talked about in the industry. We overlook it um, in the industry, and I think it's, it's very critical, and there's been some good research to demonstrate that. Longevity is another big one that exists out there that I think is another piece of this puzzle that we need to, to talk about from a commercial cowman standpoint. When you look at these Brahman cross cows, there have been a lot of studies, uh, even some of these older studies, that suggest those cows live or are productive to a greater age. If you look in, in the desert country of Nevada, uh, these cows, 90% of them in heat at the start of the breed, eight breeding season versus less than half for straight Herefords. And certainly there, a lot of that effect is strictly heterosis. Uh, we know that's a big component, of, a big piece of this puzzle. When you look at some more work from Texas, it suggests, you know, our Angus and our Hereford cows, our, our Boss Stars cows, nine, 10 years of age, uh, our Brahmin cows, longevity is not real good on them for a lot of different reasons. Reproduction is one of them. Uh, our Angus Hereford crossbred, just like you'd expect because of the heterosis bump, they're around 12 years. When you get when you add the Brahmin to the cross, and we go Brahmin Angus or Brahmin Hereford, we're talking about 13 to 15 years. We're talking about three to five more years per cow in terms of longevity. The question is, are they productive? Are they just old cows, or do they raise good calves? This is some work out of East Texas, the Overton Center, where they looked at productivity of three to 12-year-old cows versus 12 to 17-year-old cows, and they remain productive right on to an extensive age and, and I don't believe the productivity falls off like it might with some other cows that, that we might be dealing with. So why is it greater? Well, I think there's some adaptation issues there. It makes them live a little longer. Cabin ease is part of it. We've already alluded to that somewhat. Parasite resistance. Uh, and then I think they keep their teeth better. I'll show you a little bit of data on each of that.